Greetings, my name is Kerry and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be bringing you the next in my indie intro series and I'm going to be talking about Walker Books who are a great little independent publisher but before I get into that you will notice different filming location mainly because I need to charge my phone while filming today but also the light is better in here but all that aside and on to talking about a great little indie publisher in the UK called Walker Books. Walker Books was founded in 1978 by Sebastian Walker, Amelia Edwards and Wendy Bowes. They primarily or I think exclusively publish books for children and you know, young adults, so they focus on children's books, pitch books and young adult novels, children's novels, middle grade, all of that sort of range of books. They're a British company but they have also expanded into the American and Australian markets, so that happened in the 1990s, so they launched a sister company in the, the US called Candlewick Press and in Australia they launched a sister company called Walker Books Australia. So they publish under those umbrellas in different countries. So I'm going to go on to talk about some of the most famous books that they have published over the years. I will say with independent publishers or with publishing in general, different companies will publish books in different countries. So these are sort of specifically Walker Books published these in the UK. It doesn't mean that they're the publishers of them in other countries. It just means that they own the UK rights to publishing these books. The book that really launched them, I guess, and really made them well known and it enabled them to expand into the American market were the Where's Wally books. I'm sure you're familiar with th that um, mysterious man Waldo who gets lost and you have to find him and I really love those books. I've loved them since I was a kid. Actually when I was in primary school, so when I was about sort of eight, nine, they did magazine collections which were Wally's World and Wally's History of the World. So one was about different geography, different countries and another one, the other one was about the history of different places in the world and I've still got that entire collection of magazines somewhere in my parents roof in their attic. Yeah really enjoyed those books when I was younger and they're still really popular today and there have been all sorts of spin-offs based on them. So in the UK they were published by Walker Books and that has really helped them grow. One of their picture books that's really really popular is called We're Going on a Bear Hunt by I think it's by Michael Rosen and maybe someone else I can't remember I'll put it on the screen. This is a really popular book that is often taught in primary schools and it's a really lovely book. It's been a long time since I've read it but it's basically about a family having an adventure going to try and catch a bear. So some YA books that they publish that are really popular on booktube and you maybe don't realise that they are published by an independent publisher in the UK are the Shadowhunter series by Cassandra Clare. They are the primary publisher of all of her books in the UK. Which I didn't realise. I've read a couple of them and I didn't particularly enjoy them myself but I know that a lot of people really love that series and yeah and I was surprised I hadn't realised that they were the publisher of that. So a couple of other authors, YA authors that are quite big recently particularly and you had talked about quite a lot on booktube are Neil Schusterman who writes the Scythe series and Patrick Ness who writes the Knife of Never Letting Go series I think is one of them and books like The Rest of Us Just Live Here and A Monster Calls. Both those authors are published by Walker Books in the UK and finally one of the most famous authors that they are currently publishing is Andy Thomas who wrote The Hate You Give and On The Come Up. And the Hate You Give has been at the top of the New York Times bestseller list for like I think it's over two years now which is really astounding really and in the UK her books are published by Walker, Walker Books. So those are some really fantastic authors that they've acquired th those books and yeah it just goes to show how important they are in UK publishing, that they focus on books for children and young people but they have found some really great authors to promote. So in terms of some of the awards that they've won, they apparently have won all major children's fiction awards, including but not limited to the Guardian Children's Fiction Prize, the Carnegie Medal which is sort of one of the most prolific children fiction awards in the UK, and the Kate Greenaway Medal which is an award for, I believe for illustrators or for illustrated books. And I was looking through the list. They have a page on their website about the awards and it lists all the awards they've won in alphabetical order or been nominated for and there are pages and pages of awards that their books have been nominated for so again it just goes to show the quality of the books that this 
publisher is producing. I think sometimes people have a misconception that if it's not published by one of the big publishers it's not going to be a very good book but the more I get into reading books by independent publishers the more I find that actually there's a lot of quality that needs smaller publishers to appreciate it to pick it up and promote it. There's often a lot more diversity. Smaller publishers are maybe more willing to take a risk on books that the bigger publishers will avoid so actually you can find a lot more quality in some of the smaller presses because they're willing to take those risks on names that aren't so well known or books that other people may not appreciate. Some recommendations for you from Walker Books as a publisher. A couple of them I've already mentioned actually but I'm going to talk about them again because I like them. We've got the Hate You Give and On The Come Up by Angie Thomas. If you don't know, if you haven't heard of these books, seriously, where have you been? The Hate You Give was born out of the Black Lives Matter movement in the United States. The main character, Star, witnesses her friend being shot by a police officer and then has to decide is she going to stand up for her friend who is unarmed or is she just going to bow under the pressure and pretend like it never happened. She's also trying to balance being a part of the neighbourhood she lives in which is predominantly black and the school that she goes to which is predominantly white and trying to find her way through those things. And then on the come up, Angie Thomas's second book is set in the same sort of area, in the same neighbourhood, but it follows a different character called Brie who all she wants is to be a rapper but she's struggling in school and often is getting into trouble but she feels that she's been targeted because of her skin colour compared with a lot of the white students in the school who do the same sorts of things but don't get into trouble for them and she's trying to launch her career as a rapper but her father was killed in a gang incident and her mother is worried that her interaction with the rap culture in the neighbourhood is gonna get her caught up in this in these gang troubles. Both these books explore really the important issues about identity, about race, about how we treat each other as people and they're both really really powerful books and rightly deserve all the, all the hype and all the credit that they're getting and so I really would recommend those two. Another two books that I already mentioned that I again would recommend are A Monster Calls and The Rest of Us Just Live Here by Patrick Ness. A Monster Calls is an absolutely beautiful book about a young boy who I think he's in his early teens and he finds out his mother is dying of cancer and he's visited by this monster who tells him stories and he has to try and work out what the moral of the stories is and how his story fits into those stories. It's an absolutely beautiful book, made me cry quite a bit and I really really enjoyed it and I've been meaning to check out more of Patrick Ness's books based on the strength of those two that I've read. I just haven't got around to that yet. Those are a couple of books that I really did enjoy. The rest of us just live here is, is about sort of the normal kids trying to get on with their day-to-day -day life while all this crazy stuff is happening to the special kids in their town and deals a lot with issues of mental health and um, again I really enjoyed that book. Another book that I don't have a copy of myself but I really would love to recommend is called The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender by by Leslie Walton. So I read this earlier in this year and it's absolutely beautiful. It is speculative historical fiction. So it's about the family of a girl, Ava Lavender, who was born with wings like a bird. And it's about sort of the strange things that happened in her family and in the town that she lives in. There is some quite dark content in there. So I want to give content warnings for sexual abuse and violent death. And I can't remember off the top of my head, but some of the other characters, so there's a character in there who is Ava Lambda's brother and I just really loved the way he was portrayed particularly, he was one of my favourite characters and um, the way his character was presented was really beautiful and I loved the relationships between the different characters and how they got on with their life, I thought it was a really really cleverly written book. And then finally, the last two that I'm going to recommend, so one of these books was you know, one of my favourite books of 2017 and that is The Loneliest Girl in the Universe by Lauren James and I've recently read The Quiet at the End of the World, also by Lauren James. Um, and she's an author that I really like and I'm gonna try and get hold of some more of her books because she has a couple of others out that I haven't read yet. I just wanna just really show off how beautiful this cover is. I, I was given this book, but it was on my wish list because of this cover, which I think is just stunning. <laughs> Whenever I talk about these books, people always comment on how beautiful the covers are. The Loneliest Girl in the Universe is about a girl called Romy Silvers, who is the only surviving crew member on a ship headed to a distant planet. In the time since the ship set off, technology has improved, so Earth are sending another ship to meet her. She communicates by email to this other ship and back to Earth, but things aren't really what 
they seen with the other ship and then something happened to the to the other crew members and at the start of the book we don't know what and so sort of that is revealed as the story goes along yeah it's really really cleverly written really shocking and surprising and beautiful quite at, at the end of the world i read quite recently and it's about two teenagers larry and shen and they are the youngest people left alive on the planet after a uh, illness made the entire population of the world infertile so these are the last two people to have been born on the planet and it's about them trying to discover the history of what happened to cause this infertility and what happened in the aftermath of that and trying to figure out how to carry on how to survive as the rest of their community are going to be dying out sooner rather than later it's again was really powerful and what i really love about lauren james as an author is her world building is exquisite because she gives you enough information to make you keep reading but there's so many questions when you start the book like you have to take a lot on trust and you have to keep going with the books and she gradually reveals more and more of the world to help you understand how it all fits together i found that particularly with the quiet at the end of the world when i started reading it i was like a lot of this doesn't make sense but because i'd read the other book i was like i do trust that she'll reveal everything when she needs to there's a tv program that's mentioned in both books so it sort of links the two worlds which i quite like it's difficult to tell if they're actually are set in the same sort of world and the same universe because of some of the things that happen in each book. I wouldn't like to make a, a judgement on whether these two books exist in the same authorial world or whether it's two separate understandings of the possible futures of humanity. Also, particularly The Quiet at the End of the World was a really diverse book. Lots of LGBTQIA plus representation and also of different physical and mental disabilities as well. I thought it was really, really well put together um, in that sense as well. I can't speak as to the accuracy of the representation as, as I'm not from those groups, but I, as an outsider, thought that it was done particularly well. That is those two and that is about it for today. Let me know what you think. If you've read any other books from Walker Books or if you've read any of these books what you thought of them. Hope you've enjoyed this little insight into another of our independent publishers in the UK. I'm looking forward to doing some more on this series. I need to read a bit more because it's actually getting harder now. <laughs> I've done sort of some of the bigger ones and so now I'm going to be moving into some of the smaller less well-known independent publishers. Yeah I'm just going to be trying to pick up some of their books over the next couple of months so these videos might come a bit more sparsely but it would just be once I've read enough books from that publisher to be able to confidently recommend stuff by them. Anyway enough rambling from me. Yeah so let me know what you think of these videos if you'd like to see more of them and what you think of my recommendations if you read any of them. You can also follow me on my social media that information will always be listed in the description box below. Please think about subscribing if you haven't and please like this video if you liked it it really helped me to know Know what content appeals to people so I can keep making more of that type of thing. So that's all for today, thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again soon. Bye!